Hello, my name is Nick. I'm with VGS's integration team. I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to set up your vault to do inbound routes and outbound routes. In addition to routing the data, what we'll also want to do is secure the data. So to start, I'm going to go through a couple examples. So let's do a credit card example. On your website or web form or application, you're going to use VGS Collect. VGS Collect is basically iframes within your website. The iframes will store the information and post that to VGS's vault, your vault. That vault will then go ahead and send those aliases that are tokenized to your server. Your server will go ahead and store it to your database. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and process the transaction. So your server would go ahead and send a request for that credit card back to VGS through an outbound route. The outbound route could go to Adyen, WorldPay, Stripe, you name it, any processor. So once we receive the data, we'll reveal it to that third party. Once that third party confirms payment, the request comes back to us. If there's any sensitive data, we can redact it. If not, it'll go straight back to your server. You'll be able to confirm payment and the transaction's complete. Now, let's say you're not using credit cards. Another example is using PII data. So, for example, let's say it's social security numbers. If it's a social security number, a customer would go to your website, fill in their details, including the social security number, post that, from your website to your vault. Once it gets to your vault, we'll alias it and then pass it along to your server. Your server will store that in the database. When you decide to go ahead and process that information, let's say the social security number is used for a background check, you can turn around, have your server request doing a background check with that alias. VGS will go ahead and reveal it on the outbound. And in the next example, we're going to go ahead and send it to Checker. You could send it to Checker, Experian, whichever third party requires the social security number. Once the request comes back, let's say Checker provides a report ID, we'll go ahead and redact that information if there's any sensitive information in there. Otherwise, we'll pass on the data back to your server and the background check is complete. So let's actually go through a couple examples, both the credit card and the social security number, see how it works with our VGS Collect and how to set up the routes. Before you get started, you're going to need to actually sign up, or if you've already signed up, please log in to use our dashboard to set up your routes and get your VGS Collect credentials. Before you get started, you also want to look at the documentation. So from the developers, select documentation. The details for documentation we'll cover is both getting started, which would require the inbound connection and the outbound connection. In terms of VGS Collect, if you were to click on VGS Collect on the left, you can also look at the details on how to set up VGS Collect and maybe even customize the style. We also have, for your developers, the ability to look at examples of what I'm going over today. So if you go to GitHub, look for very good security, and type in samples or examples, and VGS Collect examples will come up. When you click into this repository, you'll see the examples below. Today, I'm going to go over capturing credit card data, and I will also go over capturing personal information, which is the social security number. So if you click in to the example here, and for a GitHub example, you'll see that it'll show you exactly what you need to set up when you log into our dashboard. You'll grab your VGS Collect credentials, and put this into the HTML form that we provide here. 
And just to see a code example of how this works, your developers can actually go to the second link that I provided to show how to capture that credit card information. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So let's say you've already signed up or you've already created an account and you're logged in. What we're gonna do is from the home page, you can see exactly just like the flow diagram within uh, that I just went over, collect will co uh, collect the data, your vault will alias it, your server will store it in the database. At a later point in time, you'll send a request out to VGS and reveal it to a third party. In addition, we have helpful resources below, so if you need any documentation, there's quick links below. So let's go ahead and set up the routes. The first route is an inbound route. So just like the diagram said before, we're gonna do a credit card and social security number. So if I was to go ahead and add a route, you can actually go ahead and set your own inbound route. This would be the endpoint for your server. In this example, we'll be using Echo. So the Echo server will allow you to test the aliasing and then see what would come back if you were to set it for your, your database. All right, so let's go back to my example. I've already created a filter with a route. If I click into this route, I've already named it. I'm gonna use the echo server. You have other options if you would like to use the CNAME or filter by IP address. But for now, let's just go ahead and set up the filters. We're gonna use a path of post. So I've set the upstream to this endpoint, which is our echo server. And then the path is just gonna be slash post. And of course, the payload is gonna be a content type of JSON. So on this request, we'll do a redact. And in that JSON, we're gonna send a value called card number. So we want to redact or alias this field. You'll notice that I set a persistent storage and we're going to go ahead and use the generic alias. We have some other variations of aliases. Usually we recommend 19 digits fixed length for credit cards. Uh, we also have social security numbers so if you want to keep the last four but alias the rest you could do that. And we also have some different aliases you can use for bank accounts. So the credit card we definitely want to store, so we'll keep that as persistent. This is long-term storage. Now the CVC per PCI compliance, you're not able to actually keep that for long periods of time. So by default, we keep it for an hour. We've kept the same path, same content type, and on request, we'll redact it. And then we specify the field that we're redacting. And you'll notice for the storage type, it's volatile. So volatile just means that you're only able to keep this for up to an hour. After that, the alias will no longer reveal the CVC. All right, so let's go ahead and go through an inbound request. Before we do that, let's go ahead and go to our logs and record the payload. So this is a nice thing about the sandbox vault. If you record it, you can actually see the payload as it comes through. So let's go ahead and test the credit card inbound. You'll see that there's validation already built into VGS Collect. So that's always a good thing. All right, if I submit this, it's gonna echo back a response of what's been aliased. All right, awesome. So the CVC and the card number are both aliases. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, keep this for later. Let's go back to our dashboard, refresh our, our logs, click into that last transaction. And you'll see the filter is redacting a card number and CVC. And you can even see that by clicking on the body 
and seeing those fields are aliased as they come through. So basically, when you do the request, we alias it, and then you would store this into your database. So instead of going to the echo server, it would go to your database or your server. Okay, that's great. We've done the inbound. Let's do the outbound. So the outbound, I have modified it a little bit, but it's still the same reveal. And instead of using the echo server, you would actually specify the API you're going to send it to. So this would be Addion, WorldPay, Stripe, Experian, whichever endpoint you're wanting to send that information to. From here, you would obviously update the path to whatever the API requires. Let's say it's a, uh, it's a slash customer or slash account or slash payment. You would update your path here. Payload still JSON in our example. So on request, what we're going to do is reveal the data. I'm doing a regular expression, but most of the time what most customers would do is depending on your API, you would just do whatever the name of the field is, right? And you'll see it's persistent. Make sure you specify persistent so that it knows that it's revealing a persistent alias. The second filter is also the same. So you would actually specify card CVC and you're revealing it on request. And this time you need to specify that the storage is volatile. Because remember the CVC is only stored short for a short period of time, so it needs to be specified as volatile. All right, cool. So let's say you updated that and you save it at the bottom. If you go back to routes, you'll have your outbound set, inbound is set. And a nice little caveat is you can actually look at the filters you set up by just clicking the drop down and see which fields are going to be aliased. All right, let's go back to the logs and let's do a reveal. So I did copy this payload earlier and I'm going to go to my reveal page and I'm just going to paste this in. All right. Basically on my server on the back end, I sent this payload, which is basically again going to proxy through VGS and reveal the aliases. So if I were to go back to the logs, click into that last request, you'll see in the body that payload is removing the aliases and putting the real information back in place. And you can see this is the upstream host that we're sending to. Like I noted before, you would actually send this to a third party. So Stripe, Addion, WorldPay. And it also specifies which filters were successfully triggered on the outbound. Now, I'm showing you how to use VGS Collect. And we're about to go through the PII example with social security numbers. But in case you want to just have your, your team test the routes to make sure they're working without having to adjust the VGS collect every time on your web page, they can actually test with some code snippets, which is basically a client that you can test locally or on your, on your local computer or server. And this, uh, whether you're using curl, uh, Postman, Python, Java, Ruby, Go, any, any client that you're using, you can go ahead and do a redaction on the inbound just by sending this request. Keep in mind, if you want to secure the data from your website to your vault to your server, you'll need to use VGS Collect. And as you can see on the left, VGS Collect is available. You can get your credentials from there. On the other side, when you do the outbound revealing, this would also show you how to reveal using VGS as a proxy. So this line right here is me uh, placing VGS as a proxy. The credentials you'll see is under settings, access credentials. Generate your credentials, that's where you get your username and password. So if we go back to those code snippets, when you do the outbound example, 
you can actually use this on your server. So you're not using VGS Collect anymore. You're going to have your server take the ALS information and send it out to VGS Collect on, or VGS on the outbound to reveal it to your third party. Keep in mind, if you're using a client like Python, Java, Ruby, or Go, you'll also need to include the cert for your, your particular environment. All right, let's go through another example just to make sure we're, we understand how the whole flow goes. So let's do the social security number. Right. So like I noted before, there's an example for the PII and the credit card on GitHub. And I'm just using the same forms. So let's say my social security number is this number, which is not a real number. I submit it. All right. So I didn't mention earlier, but I had already set up PII and kept an alias where I would keep the last four, right? So 6789 matches the 6789 that was originally put in. So if I wanted to, if I want to reveal this alias back to its original social security number, if I go back to the routes, I can show you what I set up. So on the inbound, I specified another field that redacts for the PII. And if you go to the outbound, I set another filter, which I just called secret. Obviously, it depends on your third party that you're sending it to. They might call it a social security number or SSN. Uh, you would update that and the path uh, and the upstream host of whatever their API is. And you can look at the alias type. I used a generic, well, in this case, I used a format for a social security number. Let me go back to the outbound. So you'll notice the alias type, you'll need to set that on the first time when you inbound. And by default, I specified it to be SSN format preserving. All right, so let's go back to the logs. I'm going to reveal the social security number. So it starts with a 334. I go to my reveal page. Reveal it. Okay. If I refresh the logs, click in the last request, you'll see that the filter for the secret was triggered. Go to the body. You'll see the original alias was revealed to the original social security number. All right. So you've been shown how to set up your routes how to use our logs in our sandbox to make sure that the payload is actually redacting or revealing as expected. I also showed you how to use VGS Collect in order to uh, securely store the data within your vault before it hits your servers. If you have any questions, just let us know. Our support team or integration team can help walk you through it.